This is how the internet started. This is how it's going. Yeah, but you will never believe what the internet is becoming. It's the first Apple product you look through and not at. Vision Pro feels familiar, yet it's entirely new. We are now entering the realm of spatial computing. Apple has just announced a new device called the Vision Pro headset, and it is like magic. It is the closest thing that I've experienced to like magic. Like I don't, I normally don't call tech things sort of magical or surreal like this. This device literally lets you walk inside the internet. You are no longer bound by the borders of a tiny screen. The internet can literally exist on top of the real world. There is no more need for a keyboard or a mouse or even a stylus. All you have to do is look at things, tap on them, and your computer now actually understands you without any controls. Apple Vision Pro relies solely on your eyes, hands, and voice. You browse the system simply by looking. App icons suddenly come to life when you look at them. Simply tap your fingers together to select and gently flick to scroll. Although this technology is so amazing, it's also kind of scary at the same time because we're already hooked to things like TikTok and Instagram and social media in general. Many of us, including children, are actually addicted to the chemical called dopamine. Dopamine is like the feel-good hormone, you know, that good feeling you get when you get a text message or when you see a notification on your social media like somebody has commented on your post or somebody has liked your picture. It's also the same feeling that grown-ups enjoy when they are making love. That good feeling that you get, that's a dopamine hit. Therefore, it's so easy to understand why people are getting addicted to this chemical. It's almost like a drug. And now that Apple is introducing this new and even more immersive form of computing, how much more of addicts are we actually going to be? Because now we're not just watching TikToks, we're literally living inside of them. I think with this kind of technology and as it's growing, we're going to see a sharp rise in dopamine addiction, especially now children. I actually worry about my son because he really loves the TV, he really loves the tablet. I try my best to introduce him to non-screen technology or non-screen devices, but this is getting a lot harder than you might think because everything now exists as apps. You have to get your kid a tablet by the time they're two years old. This amount of screen time that we're exposing children to is harmful to them. Being exposed to such a high amount of stimulation because of all this digital content, they're growing up as dopamine junkies. This is why I introduced my son to the Furison pen, which is like an interactive book for kids. It's educational. Every time you point this pen at anything, it reads it out loud. And because it comes in like seven languages, the other day I was actually greeted in French by my boy and that was an awesome surprise. We're bonjouring around the house now. So if you're looking for a way to reduce the amount of screen time that your kids are being exposed to, you know, just check the link below and order this book for the kids. Now back to spatial computing. Now this stuff is nothing new of course, as we know a lot of companies have tried VR. Like for example Facebook, they tried to introduce the metaverse, you know, they came up with all sorts of devices to try and get people to plug into virtual spaces but it has never really actually worked out that well in the past. Mark Zuckerberg really did believe in the metaverse so much that he actually changed the name of his company from Facebook to Meta. He wanted to be one of the early creators of this new technology. But did you actually see what Zuckerberg's metaverse looked like? It was egregious. There were no apps that worked within the metaverse. You couldn't do no more things like watch Netflix or watch YouTube because you had to exist in an almost kind of a bubble called Horizon Worlds, which was really poorly designed. The graphics looked like they were from 10 years ago. None of the function that you'd expect from a modern device was actually present. And this, this is where Apple has absolutely smashed it with their Vision Pro. All the apps within the Apple App Store for iPhones and iPads they are already built in to the Apple Vision Store, which is launching the day that this device comes available. That means the moment you pick it up, you're actually going to be able to use it. Did I mention just how good visuals look inside the Vision Pro? I haven't had a chance myself to test it out, but I've seen videos from like YouTubers and reviewers talking about this thing, and they say it is so crisp. It's so beautiful. The visuals, even from what I've seen on the Apple Keynote, they look absolutely stunning. Apple, if you're watching this video, come on, we're some cool African tech junkies. Please send us a pair of the Vision Pros. We would love to get our hands on them 
test them out and create some special content with them. Yeah, that's that's my pitch, Apple. Send us one. So yeah, Meta's idea to do the Metaverse was actually not a bad idea. It wasn't really well implemented. And if there's one thing that we know about Apple is they might not be the first to do something, but they're always the first to do it right. The way that they've approached this whole spatial computing thing is exactly what Meta should have done. On top of having all of the apps that you need already fully functional, this thing can also connect to other devices. For example, you can connect this to your computer and automatically to create a gigantic display for you to view your content and to work. Even people who like to play things like video games, you can connect your controller on this thing. It's phenomenal for watching movies because you can literally make your movie display as big as you want. And Apple is making all of this possible. But who exactly is this thing actually for? Eish, but Apple, hey guys, $3,500. Guys, this is a wonder fit. Nobody's gonna be able to afford this except for the real tech enthusiast. I don't know what guided the price point of this, but my assumption is there's so much technology that went into this thing. There are so many cameras, sensors, displays, all this fancy stuff that's just supposed to work together. I mean, Apple actually had to introduce a new chip called the R1 chip, which is what gives this kind of a device the amount of computing energy that it needs to pull off these kinds of ridiculously phenomenal tasks. I understand why you're charging 3.5 for it, Apple, but eesh, tell me in the comments below what you're gonna use your Vision Pro for. Let me know if you can afford to buy the Vision Pro when it comes out, and let me know if you're interested in this kind of a device. We're obviously gonna use them just to look cool, play video games and finally break away from this tiny little computer screen. I cannot wait for that. And also, this thing is so big and bulky, I don't think anybody's gonna wanna wear this and walk around town looking like a bozo with some gigantic goggles in front of your face. I think at the moment, this device is more suited for people like content creators, developers, early adopters of technology. These are the kinds of people who can number one afford this technology, but also these are the kinds of people who can create amazing content, and amazing experiences and amazing applications that work with this thing. One of the most genius things about the way Apple has done this Vision Pro is they've opened up an entire developer kit for people like me who can create mobile applications, games, experiences within Vision Pro. Actually announcing this now is giving developers an entire year to work on apps and games and all these things. By the time this thing launches, it's gonna be flooded with so much content. I'm actually excited about having my hands on this because I think we can make spatial content like spatial movies, spatial TV shows, spatial YouTube videos that people can actually enjoy using this Vision Pro. Meta, ha, Zuckerberg, this is where you messed up. You should have started by putting out a developer kit and allowing people like me to make content on this thing, to make apps that work within your metaverse. Well done, Apple. Kudos to you on this one. I'm not gonna buy a Vision Pro for my mom for $3,500, but we're probably gonna get a few for the studio once they're available because we're the kinds of people who actually make content on these kinds of devices. So I don't expect to see these devices flooding the market per se when they launch, but me, knowing Apple, they're gonna streamline the heck out of this device. It's gonna become smaller, more wieldy, and a lot less cumbersome. I do imagine that at some point in the future, the entire Vision Pro will be nothing more conspicuous than a pair of glasses. So, are you as excited about this technology as I am? I know the entire team cannot wait to get their hands on these things. Apple, please, I am so excited about the future of computing. I cannot believe where we've come since the dot-com bubble and Y2K, and we're actually already here. The future seems bright, but at the same time, it is scary. On top of artificial intelligence and all these other new developments, it seems that the machines are taking over and our world is now becoming like just one giant computer. Although this does seem scary, it is the new way of doing things and technology always disrupts the way things have been done in the past. And I think this is one sure step into the future of mankind. So let me know if you're excited about Vision Pro. I'll catch you in the next one.